Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast chat with Agatha. My name is Agatha Langer and I am a relationship coach and you might be actually hearing some birds um, in the background. Yes, my window is open, but I thought, hey, beautiful background, <laughs> beautiful chirping of the birds in the morning. So why not? We're just going to go with it. Um, today, I would like to chat a little bit about why and how we have the notion of relationships backwards. Yes, backwards. I am going to tell you uh, the old version of what we think relationships are for and what they actually should be so that those relationships are fulfilling and, and that they are happy and that they actually make sense to us. So before I go into all of it, I would just like to let you know that, and you probably realize that, that we humans are not meant to live alone, right? And I know that in my past, a lot of times when I was just so fed up and tired of my relationship, of my marriage and of the, and all, just all the chaos that there was, the arguing and all that, many, many times I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to divorce and you know what, I don't want to think about an, another man, I don't want to live with another man, I'm just going to be on my own. It's going to be just the best and the most peaceful thing I can do myself. It was just out of desperation. And and a lot of times we will actually go through it. For me, I didn't go through the divorce. Something else happened that, that um, turned my marriage around. However, a lot of us will go actually through a breakup, right? We'll go through a, a divorce or a separation and we'll try living or on our own. But it doesn't work for a long time. You know that there's going to be that void that will want to be filled, that kind of longing and loneliness for, uh, you know, longing for another person just to have a, a companion, uh, to have somebody to come back to after your day of work and just somebody to share your life with. So... Yes, there is that part where you just don't want to be lonely, but there is also that other part to that whole equation. And it is just, it is your soul calling for another person so that you can go through lessons in your life that your person, that that person is actually giving you. And I am going to um, talk more about this concept because this is exactly why we have a related, the, the notion of relationships backwards. That's exactly why. So let me back up a little bit. So let's just say we enter the adulthood life or even before that, right? We have girlfriends, boyfriends and all that. But let's say we're ready for a serious relationship. We're ready to stay with somebody, what we think is going to be forever. And we have all those expectations that we bring in on what the relationship is. And usually the expectations are divided into two categories. They either the things that we liked when we were observing our parents or caregivers relationship, right? We, we like that, uh, let's say um, your parents spent time together, or let's say that your father was always helping in the kitchen and you're like oh i i really want this and you might not even consciously know that you want this but this is something that just kind of looked good and felt good to you and now subconsciously you're going to be looking for a partner who will be bringing the same into the relationship and once you're not getting it that's where the conflict will start right so even if you consciously don't know that this is what you want, subconsciously you've already programmed yourself to have those expectations, to have that list of, of the vision of how your partner should look like and how your relationship look like, right? So one part is going to be that. And a lot of times we're more conscious of the things that we actually don't want in a relationship. Because again, growing up, you were watching your parents um, argue over little things, right? Or maybe one of maybe one of your parents were abusing alcohol, and you were like, "I'm never going to have a partner that actually abuses alcohol. If if I do, I'm just leaving him right away." Or I don't want maybe, or maybe your father wasn't. Um, 
as motivated to do things, as creative to do things, right? Maybe your mom was the one who was always coming up with things, with projects, like, let's do this, let's do that. Like she was just that driving force, right? And your father was more like laid back, kind of followed just what your mom um, would come up with. And you're like, gosh, I don't want a partner like that, that he'll be just following me and just not giving anything on his own, not being motivated to, to do certain things. So a lot of times on a conscious level, we will know, we'll kind of reverse the bad things we were observing and we didn't like, and we kind of already know, okay, I want that partner or that partner. Well, and, and then, and then of course you choose a partner, you fall in love and no, we don't fall. We don't choose who we fall in love with. It kind of happens, right? You, you stumble across a person or the universe puts its magic together and you, and you get to know that person you fall in love. And despite the fact that a lot of times you see warning signs, right? you kind of dismiss them because the hormones are raging and you're just so in love and you have that feeling, oh, it's going to be okay. I am going to, even if something's going to be not right, I will change it. I am going to show him the better way. We'll figure this all out. It's all just so beautiful at first, right? And then the reality hits and it's like, boom, what's happening? Yeah, and we get into the situation where we're like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I didn't want and why am I getting this again? And I remember seeing a post in one of the groups, Facebook groups that I'm in, and there was this woman who started her post saying, is it me that is just this lucky? And when she said lucky, it was just the, um, in in air quotes, I'm going to say air quotes, lucky, right? That my partner thinks that I am the servant here at home and I'm responsible for the cooking and the cleaning and the kids, taking care of the kids. And he just can go to work and then comes home and doesn't have to take care of anything. And she was like, well, am I just, am I the only one that's this lucky? And, and this is, I just want to tell you that having... A relationship the way you want it it's not a matter of luck it is not the matter of luck because relationships when we enter the relationships what we think we enter it for is kind of I am going to now have everything that I didn't have when I was a child or I'm going to build a relationship that is totally different from my parents or might be the same as your parents right so you're going in and you're like, no, my partner is going to be my best supporter. We're just going to love each other and we're going to do everything together and we're going to raise kids and we're going to always, well, maybe we're not always going to agree, but we'll always figure it out. It's all, it's going to be cool. So you, so the, the, our standard, let's say way of thinking is that relationships are so that they can fulfill your certain needs, right? Maybe that's the need for being loved. Yes, of course. I mean, relationships are based on love. We fall in love. You, you go into a relationship. So, of course, the partner is here to, so I can feel loved and so I can feel appreciated, right? But what if it's not that? Because so many of us go with that experience into the relationship with that expectation and then it's like eh, it's not happening what's going on i don't feel appreciated here i do so much for my relationship i make so many efforts and my hu my husband or my partner doesn't even want to acknowledge it like they don't even see it they take me for granted what's going on here right and so what if i were to tell you that that's the place where we take our relationships or what they really for the role that they play in our lives a little bit backwards and the reason why i'm saying it is we think that relationships are to take right to, like to get something and yes that's that's true on some level but what if what they're giving you is not that hug, that warm feeling, at least to begin with, right? But they give you kind of that, I don't want to 
say awakening, but sure it is at some point, like that rude even awakening of what you actually need so that the relationship or your partner can reflect what's missing in you, inside of you. Not, not only missing, but maybe what's kind of not functioning right, a little bit maybe even broken or something that needs what I call healing. And I know that when I say healing, that's a very broad word, right? And a broad, broad spectrum of healing, like what's healing. But let's just say that there is this authentic you, right? That pure you, that pure energy. And that energy along the way, especially in your childhood, got a little bit distorted. And it got distorted via the programming that you've that we've seen or maybe through the beliefs that we got to believe or acquire take on as our own and now those beliefs are not really serving us that much right or what if that energy got distorted by you attaching narratives of who you are and those narratives are not quite true yes this they true to you right now they because that's who you believe you are right but what if it's not the true you the the essence of you of your soul so now your partner comes in and suddenly by his behavior by his words by his actions He's bringing all that up to the surface. And what do we do as humans? We run from it because it hurts. <laughs> we sure do. And it's natural to run away from pain. That's why when you're listening to this podcast or any other podcast or podcast or even piece of information that might be a book that you're looking for and you're seeking out, so that it can help you figure out your relationship situation, your real, your pain that you're going through in your relationship. You're doing something right. And you know why? Because this is your soul's voice calling you to find your true essence, your true self, to tell you, okay, something is not functioning here. This is This can't be the way it should be. Absolutely, you're right. Because relationships shouldn't be painful. However, when they are, there is a reason for it. So instead of running away from all that, what we need to do is to look at the relationships as, okay, there is something here for me. There is something that I need to go through and it might not be the need to change your partner because that's also what we usually want to do, right? We point at your finger at your partner, at our partners, and we're like, okay, this behavior is hurting me. This is really uncomfortable when you say that. You should stop saying it. You should stop behaving in this way. And then I am going to be happy. Our relationship could be just so much better, right? And again, it is not the way because if you follow that path and that trail, you're just going to be in a relationship of codependency, trying to change something that is out of your control. Because let's be honest, although we're in relationships, it's not our path. It's not our job to change the other person. Our job is to look at what the other person is giving us. And I know you might be thinking, yeah, what he is giving me is just a bunch of baloney and pain. And you're telling me that when he went with the other woman and he uh, betrayed me and he lied to me right in my face that it's supposed to be good for me. Yeah, unfortunately, and I know it sounds backwards to you. But what if the way you had it was backwards to begin with? It's almost like let me give you an example. It's almost like you going to school, right? And thinking it's going to be like, oh, just easy and smooth sailing. And the school is just going to be pleasure. 
But you go in there and there are lessons to be learned, right? There are tasks like math problems. And suddenly you're like, ooh, what do I do with that? And there is a lot of learning, a lot of growing, right? Because you know that when you went to kindergarten or first grade, you sure weren't the same person that was when you were graduating primary school or or even from high school, right? There's just those steps, the growth. And so I want you to compare your relationship to a school. And if you take it that way, then I promise you that you're going to not only pass the school of life that the relationship is setting up for you much faster, but you're going to get out of that pain faster because you're going to be looking at it as a math problem. Okay, here's my problem that my partner is giving me. How do I solve it? What, what is there there for me? How can I look at it at something that is actually going to benefit me once I solve it? What is my partner going to is, is, is trying to show me? What is he reflecting that I need to see and learn about myself? Because let's be honest too, a lot of times we'll be we'll tend to shut down, right? And be like, well, here it is. I got into that relationship and every time I try to say or talk, talk to him, he doesn't listen or we get into arguments. So I better not say anything next time. No, that's not the way. Your partner is giving you clues about yourself and mostly it's not about who you are, but what you need to let go of to actually be your self, that true self, that true essence. A lot of times growth, spiritual growth, personal growth, it is like the journey of letting go of what is not serving us. Because we get stuck in that, okay, he won't change, he won't do that, he won't go to therapy. And, and we get stuck in it, right? And we feel like a victim of our circumstances. And that's exactly, again, where it's backwards. Because... If we keep thinking about what the partner is doing to us or to our relationship, he's totally wrecking our relationship. He's totally, he's doing all those things or uh, he's like a mama's boy, right? Like he doesn't appreciate me. He does so many things for her mom and his mom is always the first one. Like he, the mom just calls and he's at her back and call. He's right there to help her. What about me, right? So you might be thinking, well, he, he yes, he's doing this to me. And sure, you can be sitting in that position and saying, he's doing it to me, he's wrecking our relationship, but this is exactly what got you there, that, that thinking, that way of thinking and reasoning is exactly what got you there in the first place. Because you positioned yourself as, as a victim of circumstances. And unfortunately, and again, tough love here from me and my gosh, when I say it, I have so much compassion for anybody who's listening to this and who can actually soften up a little bit, bring their defenses down and say, oh my gosh, maybe it is true because I'm telling you that takes a lot of courage and I repeat this over and over again and it takes a lot of like that personal humility even, that, that kind of softening of your walls that you've put against that you put up and those those defensive walls right because we tend to we tend to get into that state of defending ourselves he's doing it to me so i have to be strong and tough and i can't let myself just fall apart right you've you built around yourself that wall that protective wall and now when I say this, this wall has to come down a little bit. It needs to soften or at least find a little bit of window in there, a crack maybe, to let that information in that I'm t giving you to soak it, to soak in a little bit and to be like, okay, oh gosh, maybe if it is that way, if, if, if I really positioned myself as a victim here and who likes to be a victim? Nobody does, right? It serves us sometimes, sure. <laughs> it's nice when people pity us maybe even when, when we pity ourselves, right? Because then we're not at fault, kind of. When we're a victim, we're never at fault. And again, it's not about fault, guys. Like, I, 
I am not saying this to tell you, well, it's your fault. It's not, it's not that. I just want you to shift the perspective that you look at relationships. I want you to shift it from being, okay, so here's the, here's the big part, right? I want you to shift your thinking from thinking that he does it to me, my partner does it to me, to thinking my partner does it for me. Because I'm telling you, when I was in that situation years and years ago, when I shifted that thinking, I remember actually those defenses that I was talking to coming down, right? I could actually relax. I could relax from that position of having have to be ready to, uh, to fight, having have to be strong and having my armor on. I softened a little bit. I remember... Gosh, it was such a huge shift for me that I remember this moment even after almost 10 years of sitting there. And I remember the corner in my living room, the armchair that I was sitting in. And I remember my body could just relax. It's like, oh my gosh. So it's actually happening for me. And then from then, it wasn't like a smooth sailing kind of journey right where i was like oh yeah let's learn this of course my defenses went up and then they had to come down again and then they went up again and then they, i had to softly and gently pull them down so that i could see and understand and look from that perspective okay my husband is giving me a gift what is it what is he trying to tell me about myself that i don't know or that i have to let go of because only through that process, I could actually start liking myself again and being the person that I appreciate. And hey, you know, like I turned my marriage and my relationship around. I never used to hear from my husband, I appreciate you. What I used to do, and here is also something that you might be doing, is to put more on my plate so I can do more, achieve more, the motivated woman that I am and the high achiever, right? I would do, let's do more, let's do more so I can actually prove because he's not giving me to, it to me. He's not giving me that appreciation, that approval, that acknowledgement. So let's just do more so I can show them how capable I am. That's what I used to do, right? And it was, it was an ego's game because at that time, I didn't appreciate myself. I thought I did for all the things that I had done. It's like I would add something to my list. I would achieve, check off. Like um, one of the things, just to give you an example, I put a fence around my property practically on my own. I had some help from my parents when they came, but then my kids were napping because they were little and I would be out there with power tools putting the fence up. Yes, the big four by four post and everything else. That was a way for me to be like, well, see what I can do. And thinking that because I am, I've achieved something, something that, that is like a men's job, right? That suddenly my value would grow. And it, it, was, it was like a one-way street. It was like a dark corner that I was just getting myself into of just being exhausted, trying, trying harder and still not getting the appreciation. And why? Because I didn't appreciate myself for just who I was without all the things that I've achieved, without all the things that I knew I could do, and without all the things that I was doing and overdoing for my family and sacrificing and all that. Without that, I was nobody. So that needed to change, that needed to shift. And of course, it took a little while, but after it did, like right now, my husband, even yesterday, um, I think I was cleaning up after dinner and he would come to me with the dishes and whatnot. And, and he's like, oh, I, I really appreciate you. You know, I really appreciate you. And I, and I appreciated him saying this, but also I don't need him to say this. When he does, I will appreciate it. I will thank him for it. It, it absolutely it feels good. But when it's not there, I don't crave for it. I don't, I'm fine when it's not there because I know my own value. Even when I'm not building fences anymore or even when I'm not sacrificing myself for my family. 
when I'm just being myself and just just being and knowing myself right but along the way I had to drop all those things that were not true me and you being here you listening to this recording is not just a way for you to solve the problems in your relationships it's your soul's calling to dig deeper to find yourself because i bet that you feel lost i bet a lot of times you're you're like i don't even know who i am sometimes you might be like i don't even know what i want anymore i just know that where i am it's not what i want and i understand this i understand being in a place where you just are totally confused of who you are if things will ever change if it's just a matter of luck having a, a good partner in your life i get it i really get it all because i've been through it and i'm here to tell you that it's not it can be worked out you going through those notions it's just like really a school that your soul needs to go through so that you can so that those things that aren't you can be highlighted and by highlighted and all of times unfortunately it means go through pain because that's the way how we designed our life that is going to be those parts that aren't you those parts that need to be let go of they need to be highlighted through being painful because you know that living in a relationship where you constantly argue is not natural and that's right you need to listen to that voice you seek a state of happiness a state of peace a state of calm a state of being able to talk to one another in that deep meaningful way you seek for it because this is your natural state the same when you feel like you might not like yourself the way that you know you could it's that deep calling inside of you that voice that's telling you it's not your natural state it's not natural for a human being to hate themselves there is another way there is that way when where we love and appreciate ourselves and and can fit into the relationship just by being authentic there is a way and you feel that and that's why you keep seeking and that's what i want to congratulate you on and you, you might be thinking oh yeah congratulate blah 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 well no i'm i'm serious because sometimes people just break down and they just don't want to go any further but you hear you listening you keep asking for more information because you know there is another way and i i am that person myself like i'm not i sometimes i feel like i'm giving up but <laughs> but honestly even if those those darkest deepest times when i feel that i've just given up and i don't want to do or listen or hear anything more like i can't take any anything else and i can't move on and i might be laying on my bed and crying inside of my head i'm already thinking okay what's next what's next because i know this is not the way so that's why i want to congratulate you for that for that because your perseverance is there and please do keep listening to that to that voice in your soul that's just calling you to um, to find that natural way the way that really is the way that we could be and deserve to be living because this is this is if you're feeling pain it's just telling you that something just needs a little bit shifting healing cleaning that our lenses right cleaning our perspective and just like really okay so think about it in another way throughout your whole life you've been picking up things and energetic things right and by that i mean like emotions that might be not even yours or all different programs of behavior all different ways of being um, beliefs that you have right or narratives of who you are who you're not you've been picking it all up right but nobody teaches us how to get rid of the quote-unquote dirt meaning the stuff that just doesn't belong to you so if you imagine yourself going through the same way without actually physic a physical shower like we 
um, we go through our day and then we feel a need to shower at the end of the day right to get the dirt of our skin because it, you know it doesn't feel good it's not ours now imagine going through your whole life without a single shower and i mean like an energetic shower right the shower that would go get rid of the energetic dirt that is not yours this is exactly how you feel right now and me just thinking about not showering even after one day it's like painful to me right now <laughs> so i can just imagine not having that shower throughout my whole life and carrying all that dirt on me and so now it's your time to release it and um if you want to continue the journey if it resonates with me i am actually opening the doors to my program relationships a healing relationships blueprint and it is a 10-week program that you get for life for the life and existence of that program with all the updates I'll be talking about this a little bit more, but I will leave a link in the notes because if you are in a position that your relationship is not functioning the way you know it could be, then I can help you with it because I take relationships a little bit differently. I take them as a school of life and as a reflection of what needs to be healed inside of you. So that's the one of the reasons why you don't need your partner to participate in that program. You get the whole control within you. You can you get the whole control in your own life. And how iconic is it? There is a garbage truck right right now picking up the garbage. You guys can hear it, probably the squealing of the wheels. They picking up garbage. And this is exactly what I want to do in my program. I want to pick off all the garbage that you've accumulated throughout your life that is distorting your lenses that is distorting the way you look at life and you perceive life and yourself and i want to rebuild you and by rebuilding i really mean just digging into and looking who you are on the inside already because you you there that beautiful self that essence is already there it's just covered in dirt so let's get that all off and and reveal that authentic self that is built to have a beautiful relationship. Let's let's do it together. And if you're in it, if you're for it, I'll leave a link on the bottom so you can take a look at the program. And um, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you got some good nuggets out of this conversation. And at least I think I hope that you see a light at the end of the tunnel, right? That, that you're like, oh, okay, so that's why I had I had it backward. That's why I can't figure it out. That's why it feels like I'm just carrying that the heavy burden on my shoulders and not knowing what to do with it. Um, so again, thank you for tuning in. And um, the link to my Healing Relationship Blueprint program is going to be in the show notes. And um, see you next time.